Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the podcast. Today, it's just the English prefix. We're just here today and we're going to talk about tips for revising for those scary upcoming GCSEs, particularly related to English, because that's kind of a speciality, shall we say. So we just wanted to speak about how we revised for our English literature and language GCSEs and just hope that we can give you some wisdom on how to Some get useful those tips. top grades for English even if you're not continuing next year it's still a very important subject so yeah, Freddie's sure. gonna go first and tell you how he advised so for literature I used mind maps a lot I think it definitely depends on the type of person you are which mm. methods will be useful but it's worth experimenting because I used mind maps and I do mind maps on characters, on themes within the text we were doing, say, because I did great expectations, I'd maybe do a mind map on Pip or on Joe or on uh, Miss Habersham and the themes relating to her. And yeah, well, yeah, mind maps were the ones that really helped me learn English for the GCSE quite a lot. How did you revise for literature? Well, I did, I went to Shottery and I did Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and then I also did Inspector Calls, Romeo and Juliet and Power and Conflict, which I think we did here as well. So for the characters for Jekyll and Hyde, again, I did my maps like Freddie and I think it's so important to link them to themes. So just put a few quotations on there, like top 10 quotations you could use in pretty much any essay. Mm. Um, Don't worry too much about learning analysis. I think that should just come to you in the exam, but it is useful to know a little bit of yeah, maybe, that alliteration. That yeah, 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 for sure. Uh, maybe if, you, if there are passages that your teacher uh, might predict to come up or yeah. just passages that are quite important yeah. to the plot of whatever the novel is that you're mm. analysing, it is definitely worth having a look at those in preparation Mm. to sitting the paper and just go through and have a look and think okay well I can link this to that Mm -hmm. that explains that or whatever it may be yeah one of the main things I did in the right before the exam so a few weeks before is I got together all the past questions and just made a quick little plan of how I would answer that question yeah instead of going and writing a whole essay which would take you what 45 minutes an hour which isn't the best use of your time Uh it is important to think on the spot quickly how you could answer a question and Mm -hmm. with GCSE this similar questions seem to come up a lot I remember last year with things like Sheila I know that she'd come up before yeah Sheila oh my god so long ago yeah I know this is um yeah so that's that's a really good tip I think as well context is massive although I think it's only six marks in the literature essays it's something like that yeah knowing how to use it is quite significant at GCSE so not just putting it at the end of a paragraph like a block yeah sort of mix it into your analysis yeah finding a way to yeah finding a way to use context effectively really boosts you up Mm. Uh, in terms of marks. Yeah, that's what makes a grade 8 or 9, I think, is knowing how to structure Mm -hmm. the essay, having your key argument and really exploring that. And it's a skill that you use at A-level as well. Yeah, for sure. Also, just taking a minute in the exam to think about the structure and how you're going to plan your answers, particularly, well, in language as well, but in literature, planning an essay before you write it is so Mm -hmm. important. And there are different ways of planning. There are methods where, you know, just have a big mind dump Mm -hmm. on the page, look at the question, think of anything that may be related and write that down just so you've got a note of it. Um, My English teacher suggested having intro, three points, conclusion as a format, which I think is quite a common idea. And if an examiner sees a plan on your answer booklet, they know that it's going to be a well-structured essay. And they have that sort of positive mindset into going to read the yeah. essay and they can see that you've really thought out your answer mm-hmm. your response i think something quite important as well this used to really frustrate me my mum 
before every exam I think I ever did, <laughs> she'd always say, state the bleeding obvious. Yes. Which is important, but it's then taking the obvious and turning it, mm. thinking of a way to twist that mm. into your own argument and your own ideas about what it is you're writing about. And that applies for other subjects as well, not just English. Maybe history or even the sciences if it's a six, a six mark answer yeah it's kind of like a what how and why kind yeah, of thing exactly. like i always yeah. got taught to get top grades for english just state the obvious the points that everyone has like the inspector representing like a socialist society yeah. everyone's going to write about that in the exam but the difference that sets aside the best students is thinking okay how why why does he want to do this why does he want to show this yeah, it's for sure really what sets you apart from the others yeah. should we talk about poetry poetry yeah that's a good idea. almost so, forgot i was on the gcse then. power and conflict it's obviously power and conflict and then you have your unseen so unseen i printed off the past papers and just practice analyzing mm. those just you know, dotting around different things. And I think the yeah. main thing to remember for that is language structure and form. You need all three of those to get into the highest bands mm -hmm. and sort of equally weighting them, not solely, but solely focus on language. Language is obviously going to be the main one in poetry, but yeah, structure so. is so important as well. Yeah, the unseen poetry is the bit where if you are a, a, uh, a keen English student <laughs> already, the unseen poem is the bit where you can really show off mm. and really bring in your own ideas because yeah. everyone in the exam hall, chances are they've never seen this poem before, let mm. alone have a chance to analyse it before actually being in the exam. Um, there are two, aren't there? Or is there one? There's I think two. There's a there's comparison a one right and at the an eight, end. Isn't there? I it's, think it's something like that. It's yeah. just showing your imagination because it's only AO1 and AO2. So it's only your argument and your point and your analysis. You don't yeah. have to bring in context, obviously. Mm. So it's really thinking about okay, what's that mean? How does the poet use this? What techniques are used? And I think one of the main things my teacher taught me at Shottery was to always state what technique is used, whether it's alliteration, a hyperbole, oh, yeah, for sure. we'll just state rhetorical the language. Again. Like it's, yeah. And in language as well, English yeah. language, it's so important to obviously state, because that counts as AO2 mm. if you've got these key terms in that. Should we talk about language, yeah? Yeah, sure. Language, a lot of people have a... I know this is quite a common uh, idea that language is... Like you can't revise for language. That mm. is not the. It's not very easy you to wing revise it. for. Like people yeah. just think you wing it. It is. While it is, it seems the most like a subject where you can do very little preparation. Yeah. But the way we were told to think about it in terms of revising for language, because there is revision you can do for English mm -hmm. language. Definitely. It'll seem very basic and it'll seem very frustrating at the time, but it will pay dividends if you do it. Mm. It's all about learning how to structure your answers yeah. in the exam. Know what they're looking for in the question. Yeah, exactly. How to get across... Well, yeah, how to get across exactly what mm. they're looking for in the answers. I know uh, something that helped me personally revising English language was Mr. Bruff. Yes, <laughs> <on YouTube. laughs> definitely. Mr. Bruff is a saviour. Um, um, mark schemes as well. I use the mark yeah. schemes. So for each individual question on the AQA website there should be a section on what they're looking for how to get a out of eight like in that top band what they need mm. for that and the yeah. criteria and they give student examples as well if you look hard enough on the website you'll all be able to find this information they'll give student answers why they got the grade that they did and you'll just be able to see how to format your answer from that as well I know that I did a lot of practice um, by comparing my work to the examples given by AQA. I know that the textbook that my school provided with me was solely focused around the mark schemes and how to mm. use the mark schemes to your advantage. I think yeah. that that's very important for language. Yeah, I'd agree. I think as well, the section B on both the papers is the imaginative bit. So it's the creative oh, writing yeah. and then yeah, the yeah, newspaper yeah. or the letter. That was always my favourite bit because oh, yeah, for sure. I've for always sure. loved writing. But... The best thing you can do for that is learn, again, structure. So I remember for paper two, I think it is, section B, which is like the newspaper mm -hmm. letter, we learn um, furry feet, I think the analogy furry was, or feet. something. Yeah, so it's yeah. things like um, 
learning how to use alliteration like sentence structure is so important in mm-hmm. your answers and yeah. laying it out like a title subheading if it's a newspaper that kind of thing is so important yeah considering who it is you're actually yeah, addressing as well. that's important having a resonating message to yeah, finish it off exactly. it's so important to set you aside i think in terms of creating right creative writing it's definitely learning a structure is important but also if you just go out there and find something to read find some yeah sorry find some creative writing story to just read then you'll get ideas in your head Mm. anyway and then from there it it may help in the exam because you'll have some ideas Mm. that you can you know adapt and use in your own mm. answers for the creative writing i was going to say about poetry i've remembered something yeah, that we were taught is we were taught to do theme language structure yeah that was pretty important because if you've got a paragraph on the themes because par- in the yes in the um in the essay in the exam well in the essay in the exam <laughs> you'll have to compare two poems so only one mm-hmm. printed on the paper and one from your mind mm. theme language structure if you could pull it off, was a huge mm. marker of a high-level student mm. because it covers all the key bases for analysing yeah. two bits of text, but then being able to you know, compare them together, compare the themes, yeah. compare the language, compare the structure, that is pretty much exactly what the exam boards are looking for. This mm. is going to be very AQA-centric because yeah, we did is. AQA exams, um, but especially with power and conflict as well, because there's, I think, there was about eight themes that ran through the poems, different ones. So it was like power, conflict, man versus nature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man versus nature. um, Lots of people have different ways of remembering the poem, because obviously people go, ah, I've got 15 poems to remember. How the hell am I going to do this? But I think the way that I did it was for each poem, I found a partner to it and tried to minimise it down as much as possible. Um, But people learn one poem and compare that to everything. Yeah, I was going to say, people people who compare one poem and try and Mm. mould it to fitting any other poem that comes in... Far reach. I think you need at least three or four, three or four ones you can compare that are yeah. solid. So, for example, last year it was wolf photographer, wolf photographer and I compared up. it to poppies because war it was the main theme. Yeah, and I was happy that I had made those comparisons. You know, mm-hmm. I'd made notes with a big line down the middle, one side wolf photographer, one side poppies, quotation comparisons, context comparison, yeah. themes, everything. And just really getting that comparison between the poems, mm-hmm. similarities, differences everything like that is yeah, so for sure. important okay yeah, I think that's everything I think that's pretty much everything it, it, it does sound like a lot but at the end of the day if you put in a bit of work you'll get high high <laughs> rewards and you've got a massive summer to look forward to afterwards oh, which is pretty amazing. sweet but yeah number one thing I learned hard work pays off yeah for sure <laughs> so. also 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 for some of the uh topics that may come up in the exam we've done previous uh kes casts that are on the channel mm-hmm. so scroll through the history some of the earlier ones particularly were um when i was in year 11 people in my year like me like rob like neely uh like louis just talking about i remember we did quite a few on the poems mm-hmm. um a few a on spectacles yeah there are a few on the spectacles i was going to say about uh i think the best character in the spectacles um so yeah if you're struggling for ideas or inspiration definitely have a look mm. back at those because they might help and yeah i think that's about everything we need to yeah. say on that Thank all you right for listening. well good luck hope all your exams in the future go well you'll do great yeah and look forward to the summer afterwards